All right, Ed. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the stream, the Chew stream here. Uh, my name is Bobby Chu, and, you know, I'm super excited, super just happy today. You know, it's a wonderful Thursday in Toronto, Canada. And, uh, yeah, so every week what we do it here on the Chew stream is we meet up, do a little drawing, do a little talking, you know, about questions and thoughts about being an artist, about art in general, uh, things like that. Um, you know, growing up in Toronto and starting my career off in Toronto, um, a lot of times I had questions about, you know, the movie industry and things like that, and I didn't really know where to kind of turn. So part of the whole entire point of this, um, this stream is to give kind of like an outlet for people that are interested in the same kind of industry, uh, movie or gaming or whatever it is. Even though I haven't done too much gaming, I still, you know, worked on some games. Um, and just to, you know, ask questions that you want answered. I might not give you the ultimate, that is the definitive answer, but I can give you my own thoughts based on my own um, experiences right and that's what this stream's all about is just trying to help people in a positive way that might be struggling with things that I've struggled with in the past and that I could share with you you know how I overcame those problems and hopefully that will uh, affect your life in a positive way and hopefully get you past a few hurdles that might take you a lot longer if you had to figure it out for yourself Okay, so big shout out to all the all the people in the chat right now. Um, I see a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of people in the chat right now on live stream. Um, what I love to do is to start off by giving a couple shout outs to the people out there that are watching live. Um, you know, tell me where you're from. I'll give you a shout out, and then everybody can see. Wow. There's people like me all over the world, right? I can see Shren from Malaysia on there, or Singapore, my bad. Waikit from Malaysia, got Singapore, got New Hampshire, um, Germany, New Zealand, Texas, Brazil, Madrid, Spain, um, you know, Netherlands, right on. Belgium, Slovakia, Algeria, Dubai, Denmark, holy smokes, Greece. LA, Denmark again, Colorado, everywhere, Germany, that's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about guys, you know, one of the biggest things that people say to me is, oh my area that I live in, it doesn't have that big of an art community, so what do I do, you know, what do I do, well, having a good art community is definitely important. It isn't absolutely necessary if you're very, very driven. But, you know, something like this. I would say join something like this. That's the whole entire point of me making something like this. A little group where we can just kind of hang out and find like-minded people such as ourselves. And at the same time, if you're not doing any super important work, why don't you put your... Don't put your pencil down, but put it down on a different sheet of paper, doing something just for yourself. Um, you know, because we have to keep that love of art close. We have to keep it strong. Um, you know, we have to make sure that art doesn't just become just a job, right? That's not why we started to do art in the first place. So this is also a little reminder of that. Just taking some time out to do a little art for myself. Um, the other thing here, for those of you that have never been on the stream before, is that this drawing that I'm going to be doing in this hour, you can win it absolutely free by just going to this link right here, http 
um, or you know bit.do slash may 15th hyphen chewstream that will lead you to a Facebook page and you can write questions to ask me but you can also share that link on Facebook to you know for a chance to win my drawing okay so at the end of the stream here I will announce uh, the winner of this drawing and I'll give it out to somebody out there in the world sending some good positive vibes out there to somebody in the world hopefully uh, you know it'll make them want to draw something <laughs> inspire you to you know do something um, so there's already a bunch of questions on that Facebook post I was saying but actually first Big shouts out to uh, all of the in-house workshop students. It's great to see you guys, all the past in-house workshop students. Actually, right now, uh, I have with me just hanging out in the studio, uh, Alvaro from Colombia, our previous workshop student. No. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Uh, I'm sorry to put you on the spot there, Alvaro. But, uh, yeah, you know, one of the things that I love about being an artist, just being an artist in general, is that um, yeah, it's just all the new people that you get to meet, really. Hold on one second. Um, okay, yeah, so, you know, one of the best things about being an artist is really, it's not about the cool projects that you get to do, things like that, but it's all about the awesome people that you get to meet. So, you know, um, doing the in-house workshop thing, having people come to Canada to study with us, to study with my buddy Thierry LaFontaine, uh, T-Bear is what we call him. You know, um, it's one of the most rewarding projects that I'm doing. So, uh, oh, by the way, definitely want to mention this, 30-day in-house workshop. So what that is, is that you will be living with Thierry LaFontaine in Montreal in this big old house for 30 days right and he will put you through the imaginism in-house workshop intensive super intensive workshop where every day it's non-stop you know nothing but eat sleep drink paint art all day dream art all day you know a lot of times uh, when I was trying to study and when I was trying to get better there would be a lot of distractions in my life you know when I was staying at home wash the dishes clean your room help me with this help me with that well it definitely wasn't that kind of annoying voice but you know you know what I mean it takes you away from uh, your art so this whole entire workshop thing it's a wonderful unique experience where we take you out of your environment put you in with a bunch of other super hardcore artists and you're just drawing and painting every day learning every day studying every day and when that happens the the level of improvement that will happen within that 30 days is just tremendous so highly highly recommended and the main thing is is that registration open today it will close at the end of the month it closes 31st I put 23rd there it should be May 31st it closes okay and the best thing is is that there's just four of you there's only going to be four people that are chosen to attend the workshop um, so it's very exclusive very very special okay and actually I'm going I'm heading out there next weekend to greet the next batch of students that are going to be coming in to the Montreal workshop 
it's going to be awesome. Really, really looking forward to it. Okay, um, let's go to some questions here. So, this one's a really good one. Hi, Bobby. I, I became a full-time freelancer about two years ago, and it wasn't uh, long until the back pain appeared. I try to sit in an appropriate way, take breaks and stretch and do exercise regularly, but still it hurts. I've come to a conclusion that it may be associated with the position of my walk of my Cintiq, right? The Cintiq monitors you actually draw on top of the um, on the monitor, right? I want to ask you, how do you do work with it? Tablet at 45 degrees. Is your elbow resting somewhere or up in the air? Don't let your elbow rest somewhere. Okay, I believe if from my own experiences, that's where I got a lot of my wrist problems from was the Cintiq. Even though I still am a big advocate of the Cintiq, I still love it, I still use it. I do, however, feel that a lot of um, a lot of the arm problems that I developed were from that Cintiq um, because it's not as easy as painting on a tablet. When you're painting on a tablet, you're just you know hands down painting on a tablet. Your head is up, so you know no neck problems, no upper back problems will happen as nearly as easily as when you're on a Cintiq, you're, you're looking at the thing kind of downwards if you're at a 45 degree angle, right? Um, and your arm is up. Your arm is up much higher, taking a lot more effort to you know, do that. So I definitely think it's your Cintiq. What I would do is what I like to do is I like to bring my Cintiq, because I still use a Cintiq, I bring it all the way to the edge of my desk as much as possible. And then I'll put the, the little um, keyboard usually to the left of my Cintiq. So I'll try to have it so here's my desk, right, and I put everything right to the edge. And I try to make sure that um, that the height of my my Cintiq is at a comfortable level where I'm not really looking downwards or upwards at it. I'm more just looking straight at it. Yeah, really good uh, question. Really relevant to today's uh, artist. And then if you really have problems, you know, you get a brace like this. Today my arm isn't feeling too hot, so I'm wearing it today. Um, let's go to another question here. So Hal writes, uh, I recently started to draw in a similar style to Ian McKegg, and I'm enjoying it uh, more than any other style I, that I've tried before. Would it be possible to get a concept art job at a big company like Blizzard with such a loose style of drawing, assuming the design is great? Well, you know what, Hal? That's a really good question. The main thing is, is that Ian, Ian McKegg, he can also do stuff super tight. He can do things that look that you know look like they were done really loosely, but when you look at it from far away, it's really, really tight. Actually. Let me see if I can find a little goodie for you guys. Because um, I actually have a Ian McKegg drawing here I could share with you guys. You can see what I'm talking about. Let's see if we can get this uh, nicely on screen. I don't know if you guys could see that, but um, this is an Ian McKegg drawing right here. You can see that much of it 
There's a lot of loose parts on here. Right, there's a lot of loose parts on here. Um, but the feeling of everything is still quite tight. And the thing is, it's like you can't really draw this loose and make it feel nice and tight without being able to draw nice and tight. That's the general rule. see all these little really nice details but they're super loose right the tree is done so loosely it looks like but there's this wonderful sense of solidity there so there you go there's a little special impromptu little surprise Yeah, it looks like He-Man, says GG Soul Sister, right on. Uh, okay, so let's go to the uh, next question here. So, you know, to answer your question, Hal, I would definitely say it's going to be a, a lot harder if you can't finish your paintings. You know, if you can't put that nice finishing touch on to things, especially nowadays, it's a lot harder. Um, because so many more people can draw really, really nicely, a lot more than before. Um, let's go to the next one here, which is, this one's from Nicholas, from South Africa. There are many artists who are poor and who struggle financially. I'm one of those artists with a degree in graphic design. Uh, yet I'm still earning peanuts and usually broke near into the month. You know, what do you do, right? What do you do? What do you believe is the reason artists are unpaid or underpaid or poor? There's a bunch of reasons that I can think of. So one reason is your fundamentals. Your fundamental understanding of art of life, how do we see the things that we do? Why do we see them in that way? Um, the fundamentals, that's what kind of makes, holds everything up, uh, makes ideas great because they're executed nicely. Sometimes you have great ideas, it's just bad execution. Um, what else is there? There's communication. This is so underrated in schools, but when you think about it, can you get any kind of job without communicating with anybody? It's very, very rare. You have to be able to communicate with people, so why are people not being taught how to communicate with their clients, with other people in general? You know, it seems like it's a no-brainer that especially looking at the the general kind of uh, personality of an artist, including myself, is somebody that starts off being very introverted. So even more so should they learn how to, you know, communicate with others, to talk to people. Some people are just so awkward talking with, um, you know, with a director, with clients, with perhaps a really well-known artist, things like that. We don't know, you know, we aren't, aren't taught how to communicate. Another big one is thinking about um, what makes things spread, right? If nobody wants to spread your work, then you're the only one that can do it it makes it a lot more difficult to find really good jobs. One of the best things is when clients, when people, they just start spreading your work all the time and then they're advertising for you. 
jobs come that way. That's generally how I do things. I try to, you know, every time I was talking about this last week, every time you put up an illustration on the internet, that's a chance. That really is the one of the biggest chances for you to become super well known, your art to become super well known instantly even right there is a chance because things can go super viral and whatever but if you don't put anything out if you're spending more of your time um, putting the same things out you know going company to company studio to studio showing the same stuff I don't feel like that's the best use of your efforts. I think the best use of your efforts is to learn, to practice, to learn, to get better, and in as a result of your learning, you're creating stuff, right? You have to practice, you have to try, you have to make things to get better at them. And then those things that you make, put them out on the internet. Put them out so everybody can see them. You know, and that will help to spread the word. And that's totally what I did, you know, because like so many of you, you're telling me you're from this country, you're from that country, you're from, you know, all over the place. Where are all the best jobs? Where are the, the top number one jobs that you want? Which country is it in? Which city is it in? Many of you, not all of you, but many of you will say, it's from California. I want to work for Blizzard, somebody was saying. Well, that's in California. I want to work for so-and-so. Well, that's in California. Um, how do I work there if I don't want to move out of Algeria? If I don't want to move out of you know, Germany? I, I love my family. I want to be there, live there, like just like how I do. I love you know living in Toronto. You have to learn how to communicate better and you have to learn how to make your stuff spread. Kind of the easiest simplest way to explain how to make your stuff spread is just to just to kind of think okay well what is the purpose of uh, the painting that I'm doing what kind of emotion am I trying to evoke and how effectively is that emotion evoked you know how effectively does it make people really feel that way that you want them to feel that's what I'm asking if you can say yeah for sure for sure every time I look at this I'm just cracking up laughing and that was the point to make something humorous then you're you're on the right track you know where things screw up is when you think yeah they're kind of funny but they're really not or where you think oh yeah this is gonna be really funny only because you're the one that did it or your friend is the one that did it you gotta think about it detach yourself from your work a bit and go what if I never knew who painted this who this person was would I be interested enough in the image that I would want to spread it that I want to share it um, actually I'm gonna be doing a nice workshop in uh, Singapore in June next month um, and it's gonna be all about what makes images viral what makes images viral so I believe um, man I forget what the website was called but I believe somebody in the chat can definitely um, you know post it there if you're interested in coming if you're in the Singapore area <laughs> It's going to be my first time in Singapore, so I'm pretty excited. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I want to mention the San Francisco workshop. It's going to blow your mind. October 6th. You can write this down. 
October 6th. It's going to be the day after the Ape Convention, the big convention in San Francisco. It's going to be the day after, so it's going to be actually a Monday. We're going to have the super ultimate one-day super workshop, okay? So the guests that are coming, I am so excited to tell you the instructors that will be there is going to be Daniel Ariega, Pixar character designer, Daniel Ariega. There's going to be Dice Tsutsumi. What's up? Holy smokes. Dice Tsutsumi, art director at Pixar right now. It's going to be Robert Kondo. Holy smokes. You know, art director at Pixar again. And there's going to be Brenda Chapman. That's right. The director, co-director of Brave, of Prince of Egypt. All four of these super all-star, crazy super all-star artists are going to be at the San Francisco workshop. Boom. That's what's up. Daniel Ariega, he's going to be teaching, you know, character design for feature films. Dice, he's going to be teaching color scripting. Um, Robert, he's going to be teaching set design. And you guys are getting the scoop because this has not been announced. Tickets are not even for sale yet. But, you know, I want to let the hardcore chew streamers know first before anybody else. So, crazy excited about that. That's going to be awesome. Um, oh, and the other thing I want to mention is you know, Sketchbook Pro or Sketchbook Express. You know, they're putting on... Autodesk has always been a huge supporter of our stuff. Sketchbook Express is this really cool uh, program that I like where you can sketch things really quickly and beautifully. I would say the most beautiful sketches, you know, especially for um, drawing kind of things. It's definitely Sketchbook. Um, so Sketchbook Express, they're doing a contest and they wanted Schoolism to help uh, help out which we were of course honored and very glad to help out and support so the contest the winners are going to get uh, two thousand dollars worth of schoolism classes and that's going to be awesome so you know definitely join in if you are I think there's a there is a age limit so I think the age limit is 25 I believe okay you can find out more information on schoolism.com you could go there and just look for the little uh, little image there that says 2000 went up to two thousand dollars and yeah find everything there um, let's go to another question here <clears throat> so Ressa writes uh, what do you think about the statement people who are intrinsically motivated working towards things that they find personally fulfilling are less depressed and more satisfied with their jobs than those who are intrinsically motivated or extrinsically motivated striving pri primarily to impress the outside world. You know what I think about that. I think that's a pretty true statement. If you're doing something for yourself, something that really means something to you, then of course you're going to feel much less depressed, much more satisfied with your life. You know, that's part of what helps me get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day is that I'm super excited about the things that I'm doing. I'm, you know, I try not to take any jobs that I'm not really, really excited about because it gets harder to be motivated. It gets harder to get up early, to work later hours, things like that, if you're not super interested in it. 
And guess what? Your work will not be as good and it'll be harder to find the work that you want if you keep producing work that is not to your potential of things that don't interest you, right? You know, when you have a purpose of what you want to do, you want to be a concept artist in film and television, whatever you want to do, storyboards for live action films, whatever it is, whatever your purpose is, stand by it. Stand by it because something special happens when you show an undying drive to achieve a goal. And I'm going to repeat this because it's so important. When you have a pers purpose, when you have a purpose, you stand by it. Because something special really happens when you show an undying drive to achieve a goal. When people know, when people can sense that, you know what, either way, you're going forward. Either way, this is happening. People are much more eager to join up or to you know, want you to uh, be a part of whatever it is that they're doing if they know, you know what, you're never going to stop, you're never going to tire out until you achieve your goal. And the one extra component to that that makes it a true thing is that you're using your common sense. You're constantly coming back in different ways, uh, you know, if you got denied the first time, you're not going to come back and say the same stuff. It's great if you're very persistent and you keep coming back, but if you keep coming back in the exact same way going, yeah, what about now? What about now? You know, it's showing the exact same stuff. What about now? You remember my portfolio? It looks like this. That won't, that's not enough to always get you through the front door. You have to come at it like, okay, you know, last time I asked them about this, if I could just come to the studio, what can I do this time to get my foot through the door? Perhaps it's, oh, you know what, I just saw this latest post that you did, I made this special thing for you, I just want to drop it off if that's okay. You know, and see if that works, see if you get invited in when you drop it off. Most of the time you will. Most of the time people won't just take something and then that's it. You know, especially if you are bold enough to kind of say that even if you don't do anything for me, even if you don't let me in, that's cool. That's fine. I'm just going to be here just to drop something off for you because I really love what you do or whatever. I'm interested in your studio. You know, do the thing that is less expected from you know from people in your position that's how you're gonna stand out if you do the same thing that everybody does you won't stand out you'll become this in the same group as everybody else you know so it's it's a bit of a puzzle but those are the rules those are the guidelines Um, Ressa also writes, uh, you know, what keeps you motivated doing art? I'm addicted to learning. That's pretty much uh, the most straightforward answer I can give you. Not just art, but I'm just, I'm addicted to learning. I love learning about people's biographies, about art, about life, about nature, you know, thoughts that people have written in books, um, you know, all sorts of things. You know, I'm just addicted to learning. Was there a time that you felt very frustrated and couldn't figure out what to do? All the time. There's all, all the time this kind of stuff happens. But the rule is that if you're trying super hard and you're also using your common sense, constantly rethinking, what am I doing? Is there a better way? Then if bad things happen and you totally don't deserve it, it's just life's test. It's life's test to see what you're going to do when you come across, you know, problems. 
What do people do when they come across problems? What's the difference between an unsuccessful person when they come across a problem than a successful person when they encounter a problem? Which one do you think gives up first? The unsuccessful person usually gives up or the you know successful person? Of course, anybody that can you know understand that sentence would probably be able to tell you, yeah, you know what? I think the unsuccessful person would give up first. Most likely the successful person would never give up. You know, jump through a million hurdles, a million problems to get to the final result and success. Right? That's kind of like the trait of a successful person. They'll stay on longer. They'll keep going a little longer. You know, so and they won't let failure kind of uh, they won't let failure stop them most of them will actually let failure just drive them even further you can be depressed you know something bad happens to you sure be depressed for like 10 minutes allow yourself that time to feel sorry for yourself fine then you gotta realize this is life's test. I've been trying super hard. I don't deserve this. I'm constantly rethinking my methods and all this stuff. I'm going at 100%. I don't deserve this. So what else could this mean? Why else am I going through these problems? Because this is life's test. You've gotten, you've gotten to the door. The door that you know on the other side it leads you to the next level a whole nother level but you have to pay a toll that's this problem that's why this problem is in your face that's why this problem that you didn't deserve just all of a sudden came into your life because that's life's test you know when you look at just life in general is it easy is it kind does it just let everything that has a nice heart, you know, have a wonderful life? Unfortunately, no. You know, unfortunately, life favors the people that are hardworking, that are ever evolving. The things that are hardworking, ever evolving. Imagine an animal that stops working hard to survive. What's going to happen to that animal? It'll be the first to go. The thing is, okay, life is hard. Everything's hard. We have lots of reasons to be depressed, this and that. But the thing is, the people that just go, okay, life is hard, so that means I have to work hard. The ones that adopt that are the ones that will eventually go, wow, life's pretty good now. You know, life is pretty easy, a lot easier now. Because I've said this before as well, it's like people want stability, people want a good life. Well, usually that comes from taking on huge challenges in the beginning, spending huge amounts of time kind of suffering, kind of, you know, like I would rather go out to the bar or whatever, but no, I'm staying at home. I'm working on stuff. I'm trying to get better. You know, I could do this, but no, I choose to do this the nice easy road is kind of like it always starts off being the road that you think you shouldn't go down it's it seems so much harder it's not the road that we tend to want to go down naturally but the ones that kind of uh change their thinking to this is how life is and I'm gonna go after the you know these challenges head-on I'm not gonna look for an easier route those are the ones that find the easier route later on the more comfortable route later on where they can take you know an afternoon nap they can call their own shots they can you know travel the world things like that you know I'm not 
talking necessarily about how things are for me, even though that is you know, that is how things are for me. I'm not trying to say this in like any kind of way where um, I'm saying like this is how things are for me, but not you know they're not possible for you. I'm only saying this because I I know that this is a possibility. This is a possibility for you out there listening. It's a possibility for everybody. But you have to have you know the right kind of mindset when it comes to failure when it comes to what roads to take you know oh I got a job I'm comfortable now I'm doing pretty good now does the learning stop because if the learning stops that's the precise point when your life starts to um, go in the wrong direction and you might not actually see that it goes in the wrong direction until it's too late it's kind of like, you know, like uh, if you don't have a very good liver, you're not really going to feel that until your liver stops working. It stops, you know, goes beyond uh, minor issues to like completely bad situation. That's when most likely you'll feel any kind of problems with your liver. And same thing with your career. You have a great job. Awesome. You are at a great studio. Fantastic. You know, you're there for 15 years. Great. You have kids. You're putting them through college, all this stuff. You're, you know, you're in your 50s. Great. Then you get laid off because you haven't been adding value to you as an artist even though you keep wanting you know more and more money later on because you're being loyal you're staying at your company which you know makes sense but if you're not adding value to you as an artist well the whole entire world keeps adding you know every s movie generally starts to add more and more value than before movies get better and better so if you're not adding value, you're slowly going to become obsolete. And even if you're working at a great studio, how long after you leave that studio, how long after you get laid off at age 55, can you say, oh yeah, what, what do you do right now? Oh yeah, I, I was just working at, you know, blah, 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 super awesome studio. Um, yeah, I, I was just working there. How long can you say that? before it becomes completely like obsolete like well that was two years ago could you still say that now would you still say oh yeah I just finished that you know ILM or whatever it is probably not you'd probably feel kinda of funny saying that now scary right it's a little scary but fire scary yet we need it to survive so it's good sometimes to look at the dangerous things that can happen to a person to make sure that we don't have things go out of control stability right everybody wants stability with their art careers even though the whole entire world just keeps changing and there's nothing that's stable nothing that's truly consistent the best stability, I'll tell you, the best stability that an artist can have is in their name. If everybody knows that, you know, knows about your art, not because of the studio that you work at, but because of your name, that is true stability. That's as stable as you can get because no matter what happens to you, nobody can take away your name. I know this is a very long kind of talk about that just started from this one uh, question, but um, yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. Okay, so let me see if there's any other kind of questions here.
there is about 15 minutes left before I'm going to call it a day with this uh, drawing here. So if you would like a um, chance to win this drawing, you can just go to bit.do slash hy or hyphen May 15th uh, dash chew stream and share that Facebook link for a chance to win. Okay, so let's go to another Hey James, just saw James posted up uh, the start workshop in Singapore that's happening um, on this link here, bit.do it's, it's in the uh, comments. Thanks James. Good to see you. James is actually a super talented artist, so you know, highly recommend to check his art out and uh, follow him. Um, another, you know, super promising artist that came by the in-house workshop. So, um, Toby asks, back in the day, I believe you did a little toy of your whale boy. How did that go? Actually, that wasn't. I did a painting for my friend. Uh, bunch of friends that created Whale Boy, Patrick Morgan, Tay, and uh, Ed, Ed Acosta. You know, they created the Whale Boy thing, they created the toy, and then for the, uh, for the kind of opening of the toy, they had a bunch of their artist friends do kind of tributes to Whale Boy. So that's probably what you saw, my tribute to their whale boy thing. Did you sculpt that or did somebody else make that for you? So that was somebody else. Okay, Megan asks, um, we all have those ideas floating around in our heads. Our own passion project, yes. Story or comic book idea. My problem is I always feel that I'm not at that level yet and that I need to push my own work uh, back, improve and get more industry experience until uh, I feel I'm, I'm a good enough artist to develop my own work and, uh, to the level of polish I want. Megan, that's a really good question and you know I can't give you a definitive answer because Yes, sometimes you need to, you need, you should be at a certain level, I think, to put out something like that. But again, it, it really depends on you. Because say you're, if you're 12 years old, then I just say go for it, just start doing it, right? You're going to learn so much from just putting out uh, stories and things like that. But if it's, say, um, you know, a company that you just started, a studio and things like that, and you want to make books and you're not at that level yet, well, if the first book is not as good, it might be hard to get the second book off the ground. If the first book is awesome, it'll be a lot easier to get the second book off the ground, right? Because you have a bit of a track record. I remember when we first started putting out art books, what was the hardest art book to sell out of I think we've made 13 art books so far. Each one sold out, but the hardest one to sell, the one that stayed the longest, was our first one, Girl Sketches. It's not funny. You know, because it was the first one. You know, and, and after we kept making art books, you can see the consistency. People are a lot more willing to, you know, take a look and things like that. And that's where... Um, a lot of the success from the books came. It wasn't with the first book, it wasn't with the second. It was actually after we did a bunch, like four. Okay. Let's go to a nice one here. Or a uh, next one here, sorry. <laughs> um. Okay, so Lim asks, what would be a nice way of asking people to visit your art page, like DeviantArt, Facebook, or anything, or any other site without sounding pushy or overbearing? 
Right. So if you're commenting on somebody's page and you, you want to say something like, please check out my art. I would want to, you know, advise to try to make it related to their post, right? If it's just your own art, then it's very simple. Just keep it very simple and just put at the end of your post, you know, for more art, check out my Instagram or, you know, whatever link. Like I just did a post this morning on DeviantArt where in the end I just put, um, for art education, go to Schoolism. And then I put a link, right? Schoolism. It doesn't really relate to the piece as much. So I kept it very casual, very simple, not in your face. Most of the post is really about the post, about the painting itself, right? So um, try not to be too pushy, totally. But you could have it in your handle as well, you know, like uh, your signature when you post something it might say your name at the end and then it says your website and things like that. I tend to advise if you want people to check out your site or your, your, you know, your work, keep posting stuff. And when you, um, when you post on other people's posts, make it about them. Make it about them. Make it about their painting. You know, create relationships. You know, when I was starting off in forums, I remember just being very interested in everybody, being interested in what they do, and just kept talking to them about their own paintings, what I liked about it, things like that. I never asked them to check out my stuff, but they always did, right? Because if you genuinely like somebody or you're genuinely interested in somebody's work or interested in what they said to you, you'd want to find out more. You'd want to find out if they're any good or not. And, and if they are, while well, they were kind to you, generally you're going to be kind to them, right? So. The thing that I I don't really react to is when people go, help support me. Help check out my art and help support a new artist. It never works for me. You know, it's much easier when you're not asking people for something. Instead, they do it out of the kindness of their heart or just interested. Okay. Did you watch Jim Henson's Creature Shop Challenge? No, I haven't. Uh, sounds interesting. Definitely putting that on my list. Um, Olivia asks, uh, I'll be taking a trip to the Bay Area really soon. What would you recommend doing up there that is fun and artsy? Any cool places to draw? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, you know, the things that I find fun are visiting studios. Um, visiting galleries. Um, so, you know, ILM, Pixar, PDI DreamWorks, those could be all very cool, very fun to, uh, to visit. Um, Paul Forrest asks, do you work with an agent to acquire clients? How do you handle the business side of being an artist? Great question. Um, I didn't use an agent for many years. I still don't use an agent for my own projects. I have a, a licensing agent. He's a wonderful, smart guy that helps me with uh, you know our different properties, like uh, the Nico animated comic book app. You know that was a bigger project, so I can't kind of spend my time doing uh, licensing deals is a big enough project where we felt it would be in our best interest to get um, somebody to manage that, right? Like a licensing agent. So that's why we ended up getting a licensing agent 
um, for that. But yeah, for the m movie stuff, no, I don't use a licensing agent um, because I feel like it's unnecessary. It's not like nobody would benefit from an agent, but it's not absolutely necessary. You could totally do it by yourself, especially because, you know, like uh, social media, viral content. You know, it's a lot of times I'll work even better than a somewhat decent agent. If it's an amazing agent, then that's probably a different story. You know, because they can get people to answer the calls that not a lot of people can answer. But just because you have an agent doesn't mean that that agent's going to be any good. So it's a slippery slope, right? Big, awesome agents aren't going to want to work with you if you're completely new and you, you don't have the chops just yet. Smaller agents would want to work with you. Or perhaps bad agents that want to work with you, they have some great clients, but they also have a ton of not so good clients. And those are the ones that if, you know, the top 50 people don't want this job, then they'll give it to you. And that's not a good position to be in either. So, you know, it's, it's not all about um, getting an agent. It's a s slippery slope. You want to be very careful with it. You don't want to just try things out. You want to ask the people that are already on their list, especially the ones that perhaps are lower on their um, list of artists that they represent. Somebody that's more on your level or wherever your level is, somebody that's more on your level, ask them, how's it going? You know, do you like it? What what would you like to see addressed or changed or whatever? You know, don't go running into things um, just blind, okay? So that was the agents thing. How do you handle the business side of being an artist? Um, how I handle it, it's pretty awesome you know I have a really good uh, brother that I you know big brother that I started the studio with you know in K um, and my brother Ben he takes care of all the contract stuff um, invoicing and things like that things that actually take a lot of time out of your hands you know some studios have giant you know, just piles of paper that you have to read through for their NDAs and things like that. It could be time consuming. Um, Samang Song Lee, did you always know you want to be, you want to do uh, visual development, character design, or you worked on your own thing and went on that direction from looking at your work? I have a problem deciding. I didn't always know that I wanted to be a visual development character designer, but I always did, if that makes any sense. I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do because I didn't know if it would be possible. In the beginning, I didn't think that everything is as possible as it is now. In the beginning, I thought, you know, I don't have any chance of working in movies. I don't have any chance in doing, you know, really awesome jobs. I really didn't think so. Um, I just wanted to get a job in a television studio, just doing whatever, sharpening the pencils, whatever, wiping the floors. Sounds familiar to a lot of you, but that's how I felt. And during those years, my career went nowhere. It wasn't until I started to go, you know what? That person has the same amount of time that I do in a day. That person is awesome, but I have two eyes just like that person. I got, you know, five fingers on each hand just like that person. I can pick up a pencil just like that person. I should be able to do what that person does. 
I shouldn't think of myself as you know not able to do all these things and guess what you out there listening if you're not doing what I'm doing right now you know if you're not working in films and that's what you want to do if you are not able to paint realistic you know characters out of, out of your imagination and that's what you want to do creatures and things like that it's possible it's not like it's impossible it's completely possible for you to do that because it's not like art is like basketball where you have to be a certain height or else you're gonna have immense difficulties it's not like you need to be able to run a certain you know amount it's not like you need to be a certain age you just have to be able to think see and pick up a pencil pick up you know a pen a brush whatever it is the requirements is really it's not that much So, you know, realize that and believe. And once the belief starts, then you can accomplish so much more. You know, belief is the battery. That's the fuel. That's the gas, gasoline. You know, your goal, perhaps that's more like a vehicle. Or actually to get to your goal, you know, you need effort. Perhaps that's the vehicle. Without the gasoline, you can't operate any vehicle. But if, you know, you don't have the Ferrari that you need and you have, you know, a much slower, crappier, weaker car to begin with, what well, doesn't matter? Because that car can still go and can still go pretty fast as long as you have enough gas. As long as you have enough drive it's very abstract I know what I'm what I'm saying is probably really abstract but it's the truth it's the drive it's what will carry you through okay Lita writes uh, happy Thursday Bobby happy Thursday Lita how do you deal with criticism about your your art from those who are close to you, especially if you are already unsure about your own art? Oh, I definitely feel you. It can be very hurtful when you get the courage up to show your art and it's shot down or joked about by those you choose to share it with. Any advice on bouncing back, not giving up? Lita, let me tell you something. That is the hardest thing about art. That is the hardest thing about art. It's not, um, it's not actually doing the art. It's the ego. But because that will affect your your drive. You know, and like I was saying, the drive is what will get you anywhere you want to go. Um, So what do you do? You know, let me tell you something. And, you know, I love my parents. They're wonderful people. And they've been nothing but supportive. But in the beginning, you know, and they're still supportive, but they're concerned, right? So in the beginning, they're concerned. They're not sure if I should become an artist. Or actually, they're sure that I shouldn't be an artist, really, um, in the beginning. A lot of things that I painted, uh, you know, my father loved the guy. He's one of my heroes, but he never really liked so many of the things that I painted earlier on. And it's not early on, like 10 years old, like early on, like early 20s, all the way up to early 20s. Nothing that I was doing, he liked. Except for, you know, one time I painted a painting of a person fishing. My dad loves fishing. And he liked that. But that was in high school. So, like, for years. You know, all these years, there's only been a handful of times where he was like, yeah, I really like that. 
And that's my dad. You know, again, one of my heroes saying that. So, um, I stopped worrying about that. I started worrying about, did I try my hardest? I don't really care what the end result looks like because that's so short term. If you care about what the end result looks like, okay, now you're done. Did you succeed? Did you fail? It's done. It's a short term goal. If your goal is, I got to work my hardest, that's my goal. That's what I'm striving for. If you succeed, you know deep down inside that you succeeded, even though the painting might not look amazing in the end. You know, but in the long run, that's what will bring you success if you always put in 100%. So Lita, you know, don't be t too um, concerned or don't place showing people your art and getting good response that high of a priority for you. Don't place that so much importance on that. The importance is, Lita, did you try your hardest? If you can say to yourself, today I tried my hardest. When I was tired, when I wanted to give up, I kept going for another half an hour, another hour. That's trying your hardest. Am I thinking as hard as I can? Or am I just moving the brush aimlessly, randomly, relaxing, doodling and relaxing? Because that won't have as much growth, right? Are you trying your hardest? If you can say, yes, I'm totally trying my hardest doesn't matter what everybody else thinks about the painting that you just finished. It doesn't matter. It's the effort. The effort is what will bring you that successful career. Right? So keep that in mind. Okay, so lots of really great questions today. I'm sorry I couldn't get to every one of them. It is past 11 o'clock right now. So what I want to do was I want to pick somebody to give this drawing, this little tiger bunny, uh, you know, out to, okay? So, sometimes I check for a winner off of Facebook, sometimes I check for a winner off of Twitter. Today, I think I'm just gonna go to Facebook Okay, so let's just stop it randomly. Yi Chang. Yi Chang has Sing from our Imaginism House in Montreal. So can't wait to see you guys there or you know to broadcast from there and uh, again looking forward to meeting the new in-house workshop students if you guys are listening and you're coming in um, you know this month looking forward to meeting you guys hang out with you and teaching you drawing and painting and everything. Um, yeah, and for those of you that are interested in the 30-day in-house workshop, you know, definitely ask some of the people in the chat. There's a bunch of people that have done uh, the workshop there. Um, it's a one of my favorite, favorite projects. And registration opens today. It's going to close on the 31st of May. Okay, you can go to Imaginism Studios slash learn slash workshops to find out more info. All right, thanks everybody. Congratulations, Yi Chang. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Take care and goodbye. Have a great day.